All right, guys, we're out here in Washington fishing with Shay from the fishery, and I'm excited, really excited. This is a river I've never fished before. I've always heard about it. I've always talked about fishing it, just have never done it. So today's gonna be an exciting day. Thanks for joining us. I actually got my dad up here from Eastern Oregon and right still had fishing there. with my dad is really what got me started. I used to spend countless hours in Hell's Canyon. I mean countless hours freezing and just getting after it. And so anyway, so it's cool to have my dad here with us today. Although I'm gonna give him a bad time, his casting ability right now is not impressive. Not impressive. But he did have the first bite of the day. He's usually good for fish or two. So, doing a little bit of side drifting today in the world of bobber dogging. Everyone's a bobber dogger these days. Bobber dogging is essentially side drifting with the assistance of a float. Side drifting is the same exact presentation, but the boat handler has a lot more control over what takes place. The float takes a lot of the human error, boat running error out of the equation. But when you got guys like Shay that are good at running their boat, handling their boat, that natural presentation, he's able to keep that boat in line with what needs to take place. And that's what it's all about, side drifting. I literally just cast it backwards over my head. But I cannot multitask. Don't laugh at me. I'm good at other stuff. Like editing my Facebook posts. Oh, mother of all of those holy. That was fish. No, dude, that was 100% rubber band. Drill up for a quick second. We're gonna pitch it into these trees here. With these beads though, I mean, any any pressure, any tension you feel on it, set that hook right over your right ear as hard as you can. Okay. When you get a snag, just try to bounce it off. Try not to touch the line, cut the hell out of you. Try to just hold the spool, break it off, grab you another rod. I like it. That one was definitely fishy, that second one. I saw that one was fun, yeah. That's it? That's it. Just an overhand knot on there. I've never seen this drum. before, ever. Look at that. So, she has the leader on here. This is this is a bobber stop, but that's actually keeping the bead off that knot or from sliding over. It's a regular overhand knot that creates a loop on the bottom. I'll show you. And all you do is take your hook, fold this up, and then we're gonna slide it right through the eye. Just the way we do on our, our niche knot there. Maybe, my hands are cold enough. There we go. And go right back over the hook. Everything tightens up. The bead comes right back down over. There. Look at that. That hook stays straight out instead of. That's slick. I dig it. I dig it. Cool. Show you guys how I tie my bead hook here. Pretty simple. Just make a loop. one cinch here's the key here though is going to that knot really slowly then give it a good 
sometimes it will break. Slow. Always cut your tab. Slide a little bead stop down it. Now what this knot does is make sure that bead never goes to your hook. Pull out a size one of Pro's VIP hooks here. Keys to really pinch that into that loop there, get it through the eye. Around the shaft, cinch. Again, going with a sliding bead. Just like that. So, in on all the boats I've been on, and all the bead fishing I've ever done, all the guys I've ever fished with, whether it be other guides, myself, private guys, I have never seen a bead hook tied like that. And when I first saw it, or when Shay first explained how he did it, I'm thinking, man, we're gonna break some fish off. That thing is strong. It is strong. I mean, it and is that's strong. That's why you have to go into it. If it breaks, that's where it's gonna break. Right. You know, once you tug on it, it's gonna be firm, and that's not gonna break that knot. It is. If you do it twice, you make twice those knots, it will snap every time. Just one loop through, cinch. One overhand knot, tie it through. Man, that is that is absolutely slick. But anyways, guys, all the everything we're using from the beads to the hooks, everything you'll be able to find in the description down below. So take a look there and uh, make sure you leave a comment. Actually, leave a comment on how you peg your bead and whether or not you like a peg bead or a sliding bead when you're bead fishing for winter or summer steelhead. And that right there is one of the slickest ways I've ever seen to put a bead on line. That's pretty awesome. I don't catch fish, I'm just here. You're just here, you're just, <laughs> you're just the eye candy I on guess, the boat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
is to put your bead on a peg. There's a rubber peg you could use that's inserted in there, you can't see it. Or you could just use a good old fashioned toothpick. I've caught a lot of fish with a toothpick stuck in a bead. Um, but it's the fix or the sliding. In all honesty, I don't see that one outfishes the other. It's just a matter of per personal preference, I think. You get comfortable with one. Um, I don't know. So far, the sliding bead has one fish and the peg bead has no fish. So, until the end of the day, I won't be able to tell you which one's better. For today's application, parent don't fall in the water. Be an athlete. Watch this, here we go. I'm gonna catch one right here, right under shake. See that? What you wanna do is you wanna keep the rod tips two inches away from each other at all times. So when you do hook up, you the first the bounce, set the hook. Yep, exactly. So basically here I'm running a slider for my weight. One of the keys I like for sliding compared to a fixed knot is when this bead's traveling, I have the opportunity of this line and this weight going up and down my rod, as opposed to a fixed weight where it's just going to sit right here. Just doing a simple fisherman's knot, ten and through. Here we're running about a three-foot leader. Again, to a sliding bead. And I think it's key drift fishing with these sliding beads because it's making this bead tumble as we're going down the current instead of being pegged where it's going to sit there. Now I'm having this bead float tumble like this through that current. Again, just the fisherman's knot. Ten twists and through. And here we are, we got it, everything sliding. We got my bead sliding. Basically, it's trying to get that natural tumbling egg effect.
get the net. I'll get the net. Get I'll let my dad net it for you. So awesome day fishing. We had a great time out here with the Shea and we beat fished all day long and we beat fished a little different than I've beat fished in the past. Uh, everything was side drifting beads today opposed to pulling beads underneath the float. <clears throat> Pretty standard when you're talking about bead fishing. You're talking about three different sizes that the majority of us use from a 10 meter, 10, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 12. That's probably a 12 also, I just pulled it out of the bag, but just for, for sakes of having three beads, we have a 10, 12, and a 14. With beads, these are a hard bead, an acrylic bead, so when a fish comes down and clamps on it, there's not a lot of give to it. One of the important relationships to this bead is the hook that you're using. The hook that you're using needs to be evenly sized or properly sized to match that hook. So, to give you an idea of what's happening, this right here is a 10 millimeter bead down to that knot and bobber stop we showed, that Shea showed. Number four hook with the number 10 millimeter bead. 12 millimeter bead, this one happens to be pegged. That's a number two hook. And on the number 14 bead, we're actually gonna go up to a number one hook. So we didn't use a number 14 bead today. We just fished 10s and 12s all day long because of water clarity. So those are the two that we that we particularly, particularly use today. You'll be able to find all of this in the description as far as the beads, the type of hooks, the relationship. But that's very, very important when you're bead fishing when it comes to the actual hookup ratio. You hear it all the time. Guys are bead fishing, they miss fish, they miss fish, they miss, miss fish. The quality and type and bend of hook that you're using when you're bead fishing is very, very important. So make sure you size your hook according to your bead. today really appreciate you again chime in on the comments on what we're doing here what you like what you don't like what you want to see more of and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode thanks for watching i want to be a fishing guide it'd be so awesome go fishing all the time you want me to start all over all over from the infamous last thing just say for more fishing videos okay like right now yep. you sure right now why don't you go <laughs> For more fishing video guys, make sure you like, or no, damn it! <laughs> I'm totally ready now. <laughs> How was that?